Hello fellow humans, welcome to Degrowthify number 4, our series about how degrowth can save the world from capitalism. Stay tuned, I have a surprise for you. As you probably know, there are many definitions of degrowth. I often use this one, so today we will unpack it and highlight some beautiful ideas from degrowth that not only will cause capitalism to wither away, but will also inspire you to imagine how life can be much better in a post-growth society. At the end, I will also try to answer the very difficult questions, how can we change our lives? How can we help with this transformation of society? And now the surprise, meet Deer. Deer stands for Degrowthy Eminently Amiable Robot. She will help us with our videos. Uh, say hello, Deer. She's often very shy and tends to use text more than voice. Okay, let's go back to our video. Let's read together the definition, unpack it, and then we will get to the list of inspiring ideas. Degrowth is the expansion of freedoms and well-being for all humans within the limits of Earth by reducing production and consumption to lighten ecological footprint, planned democratically in the spirit of social justice. This is the definition currently posted on the Degrowth Collective website. And it is a minor modification of a definition by Timothée Parik from his book Slow Down or Perish. The expansion of freedoms and well-being wants to say that capitalism severely restricts the freedoms and well-being of humans. What is freedom? Let's say metaphorically that freedom is movement without interference. Movement of your body, of your thoughts and emotions, of your aspirations, needs and desires, Movement to seek survival and happiness. Movement to seek well-being and comfort. Well-being can be understood as condition of comfort, safety and happiness when people feel secure in their basic comforts and can use their creative energies to support the flourishing of all life on this planet. Capitalism has cut deeply into our freedoms and standards of well-being by the way it forces us to comply with its draconian demands. Work 40 hours a week just to live. Buy this or that because it's a must-have. Obey the orders of your boss or else. Pay your taxes so your government can go to war or bail out big corporations. Get a job or end up on the street. Eat low-quality food. Pay fees pay landlords, pay mortgage, pay for water, pay to walk on land, pay to get elected, and so on. The growth wants to stop this madness and allow humans to flourish to their fullest potential. The riches of Earth are plenty, but they are controlled by a minority of humans. That needs to end. For all humans means precisely that freedoms and well-being should be fairly distributed. But why? Inequalities always lead to undesirable outcomes. When some of our ancestors had overhunted buffaloes, it devastated their population. It was too much. Today we do it again with fishing, industrial agriculture, forests, lithium mines, fossil fuels, and money. Very few humans continue to amass wealth much faster than everybody else. This is bad because it maintains poverty restricts the freedoms of billions of humans to pursue their freedoms and their well-being. Degrowth can fix that. Within the limits of Earth means that when we degrow the excesses of the rich and expand the wealth of the vast majority, we will do it in such a way that we keep the balance with nature. We cannot afford to give the lifestyle of the rich to everyone. Earth cannot sustain it. There are not enough minerals to do it, not enough energy. The inevitable ways from that kind of affluence will accelerate natural disasters, accelerate the extinction of life, including humans. So it's about the right kind of balance in lifestyle, a good, fulfilling way of life with more free time, much less material accumulation, more possibilities to unchain your imagination with less suffering.
by reducing production and consumption means that in order to get there, society will go on a healthy diet on average. Rich countries will cut their material and energy consumption by vast margins, up to 90% of their current levels, so the other countries can grow more towards just levels of freedom and well-being. It is not enough if we use paper straws and reusable hemp bags in the global north. We will also stop producing fast fashion, luxury cars, private jets, silly gadgets. We have blamed consumers enough for their choices. It is time to take insanity off the shelves, so we are no longer tempted to buy it. Same goes with advertising. It will be phased out, so we will not be constantly reminded what we must have in order to maintain a fake image in society. To lighten the ecological footprint is the material side of the goal. All these have in mind our relationship with the environment. Capitalism has pushed too much into the environment, has breached boundaries, has taken too much, has wasted too much, has destroyed too much in the quest for profit, claiming falsely that it was in the name of increasing well-being. It increased it all right, but for the top people, always the top people, and not the billions in the global south who did the labor, or the working class in the global north who did the overtime and the multiple jobs. Planned democratically is the way to do the transition. Democracy as it stands today has been corrupted by the political system that stopped representing the people. True. The world now has 57 authoritarian regimes, 35 hybrid regimes, 52 flawed democracies, and only 23 full democracies. However, almost all of these describe themselves as democracies. How are we going to end capitalism if people don't actually have the power? Surely not by allowing tyrants to do it, but by pushing for even more democracy. We'll come back to this. In the spirit of social justice, describes the motivation and purpose of this transformation of society. It's the spiritual side of the goal. We do it not just to become friends with Earth and all other beings, but also to establish meaningful justice for everyone and obvious and subtle privileges, because this is the only way we can continue as species without suffering the fate of buffaloes at the hands of hunters. All this sounds great and beautiful. Who doesn't want this kind of society? Yes, dear. Time now to take out some practical inspiring ideas from the degrowth definition. There are many, but we'll just stick to seven in this video. Work time reduction, job guarantee, universal basic income and maximum income, free public transit, right to repair, decreasing material caps, refreshed democracy. Important to know that many ideas for the transition will work together in order to be effective. Work time reduction. What if we worked 15 hours per week in the economy we have today for the same pay? A worker at Smartphonia Inc. will go home after finishing the 15 hours in a week and then do whatever. For Smartphonia, it will mean that they will either have to hire more workers to keep the same production or produce less with the same number of workers. We actually want them to produce less, which will happen if we observe the other ideas in this list. In this scenario, having much more free time, the employees can discover a new way of life that will make them happier and freer. We will no longer have to earn a living because living is a fundamental right that does not need to be earned. You will work to achieve your particular kind of personal well-being and explore your freedoms, all within the limits of Earth, just like everyone else. What would you do if you only had to work 15 hours in a week to cover your expenses? The job guarantee. I grew up in communist Romania in the 1980s, where the state had the program to give people jobs the moment they graduated from school. 
there was virtually no unemployment. Everyone had a job based on the grades they had and some sort of choice. However, this was a top-down system, very centralized, ruled by the Communist Party. It worked in the sense that nobody was left behind, but it did not necessarily make people happy. We do want guarantees, safety, no stress with finding jobs, but we also want the freedom of choice. We also want to do meaningful jobs. The job guarantee proposed by Degrowth will create jobs paid for by the state, however managed by communities based on their needs and managed by public agencies that are ran democratically. These jobs will not be bullshit jobs. They will be about care, healthy food, community engagement, organizing local events and markets, local projects for sustainability, teaching and research, innovation and exploration, and so on. Thank you, dear. Universal basic income and maximum income. What if we paid every adult citizen an unconditional monthly income, just enough to cover basic living expenses? No questions asked, no means testing. At the same time, to avoid run-up inflation, we can put a maximum limit on income for everyone. Let's say no more than $111,111 per year before taxes. So, no more billionaires, no more millionaires. I can hear the blood of capitalism boiling. Give everyone free money and limit how much I make. Okay, hear me out. We know freedoms cannot be infinite. We know inequalities are bad. We know we transgress the limits of the planet with our way of life. To restore the balance and keep our freedoms, everyone will come to understand when enough is enough and that efficiency without sufficiency becomes deficiency. We will still be different in the ways we pursue happiness and well-being, except that this time we will zoom out of our minds and see we are all part of a bigger picture where all life happens within limits. It is all about feeling how limits can actually give you more freedom. It's a leap of imagination. This will apply to everyone, so the tyranny of the ruling class will simply fade out. What would you do with your life if you had a guaranteed monthly income on top of your salary? And you will know that once you reach a maximum amount, you will no longer have to obsess with making more money. We do need to get around, but we have too many personal cars, too much traffic, too much pollution. If we made all public transit free, reliable, electric, beautiful, fast, we won't have to keep a car in the garage. If we replaced each gasoline car with an electric car, we wouldn't solve the problem. We will still have the traffic. Pollution from fossil fuels will switch to pollution from lithium mining or whatever mineral they need to build the new fleet. Free public transit boosts freedom. We will connect with each other more and enjoy the ride. Fast trains, trams, streetcars, electric buses, few electric taxis or car sharing will do it. We will also free up parking lots. Streets will become quieter and more pleasant. Would you give up your personal car if you had a super well-developed free public transit and everyone else did the same? Right to repair. Capitalism wants to sell, sell and sell. That's why products are not made to last. So we buy them again or the upgraded version or the new invention that solves the same needs or some fake needs. If we had the right to repair our devices, they will last longer, we will produce less of them, we will spend less money, we will waste less. Manufacturers can ensure their product can be easily repaired. Manufacturers can also be engaged by law to be fully accountable for the entire life cycle of the materials used in their products. From how the raw materials are procured, 
to how waste is managed. Every step in the process will respect the limits of what the environment can support, taking from nature just enough to allow nature to regenerate and disposing waste to avoid damage. Would you like your stuff to last much longer? Decreasing material caps. I will now say a difficult word, rationing. We do it all the time right now with water, toilet paper, gasoline, electricity, diet, labor, credit. Rationing materials actually means not extracting from Earth more than what allows Earth to regenerate. Of course, copper, lithium, iron does not regenerate after we extract them, but the surrounding environment can regenerate. Responsible mining is a way of rationing extraction. If we limit how much we extract, which includes fossil fuels, production will immediately decrease, which is what we want in the first place. If we put the cap on materials, we actually leave room for businesses to innovate freely within those limits, while also observing the other ideas put forward by the growth. Refresh democracy. This is actually what cuts to the heart of capitalism. There's no democracy inside corporations. We must obey our bosses. We cannot elect our bosses. And we have no power whatsoever if we do not own shares of the company. Imagine if companies were organized democratically. All employees will decide together what to produce, how to produce, who gets paid and how much. How the company is managed and by whom, how the surplus is shared. Ownership of companies can evolve away from the shareholder model, where power is proportional to how many shares you have. Democratic models for business will appear alongside the traditional ones and expand until capitalist corporations will become obsolete because nobody will want to work for a company owned by somebody else who tells them what to do, threatens with unemployment and keeps all the fat profits to themselves. Dear knows. Not only that, even political democracy can use a boost. Who says we need to elect our representatives? We transition to a mixed system based on sortition and sociocracy, which will essentially make the party system obsolete and eliminate money in politics. I will make a video about how this would work. Would you like to work for a democratic company and live in a true democratic society? There are many more awesome and inspiring ideas from the growth. Check the links below. How would the post-growth society look like? 90% fewer personal cars, parking lots converted into organic gardens and fruit orchards, highways converted into fast rail, bicycle lanes and wild vegetation, boulevards converted into green spaces with benches, gazebos, meeting places, dancing places, parks and recreation, songs of birds and of humans instead of traffic jams and honking, parking garages converted into gardens or simply replaced with something beautiful. And now the difficult questions. How can we change our lives? How can we help with this transformation of society? There are several ways to do degrowth. Let's call them slow degrowth and fast degrowth than everything in between. Slow degrowth is what each one of us can do on a personal level for our own psychological and spiritual welfare. This may be called minimalism or voluntary simplicity or alternative hedonism. It's about finding freedom and happiness with a lifestyle that has a very low material footprint. If you grow your food, you won't have to buy frozen chemicals. If you mend your clothes or use fibers like organic hemp, you won't have to buy snazzy garments just to prove a point about who you are. There are joys to be discovered in the post-growth world. It starts with unshackling our imagination. Fast growth is the top-down approach, when we force our governments to implement ideas like those we discussed today. Remember I said we cannot allow tyrants to do the transition for us, because this may become some version of eco-fascism. We also face super urgency 
because of many sad climate news, biosphere news, injustice news. We are running out of time. How do we force governments to act against the interest of the ruling class? Author Samuel Alexander says we need slow degrowth first to build a large base of citizens who will want this transition, then force the government to act. But that takes decades to create. What do we do? We don't have time. I think we probably need to try everything. My personal approach would be to build a list of 7-10 ideas like we discussed today and get organizations on board with them so everyone starts demanding them at the same time. Labor unions, indigenous groups, environmental groups who actually have political power to strike, stop production and take corporations and governments to court. What if hundreds and thousands of organizations all engage to demand for the entire society work time reduction, job guarantee, universal basic income and maximum income, free public transit, right to repair, decreasing material caps, refresh democracy. Instead of playing whack-a-mole only with issues pertaining to their group, capitalism likes to sell you more refrigerators and air conditioning units to tackle global heating. But capitalism keeps forgetting that this perpetual growth of production was the cause of the climate crisis in the first place. It's time to get serious about these issues and remain focused on what really matters, freedom, well-being for everyone. Thank you for watching. Help us grow this community and support me if you can. When we reach 10,000 subscribers, I will be doing a monthly live stream where I will talk about much more, take your questions and have fun. See you in the next video.